Hello, this is Alex for Fun Kids Radio. I'm on stage at the Playhouse Theatre in the West End of London, and I'm joined by some of the stars, Carly Stenson and Dick and Dom. Hello, Hello. guys. How are you? All right. Really good, really good, thanks. Um, so, first of all, Carly, um, for those who haven't seen Spam a lot, what happens in the show? <laughs> yeah. so no, the whole oh synopsis, gosh. everything. Yeah. I have the difficult question. Well, basically, King Arthur is on a quest to find the Grail, and um, to put it in brief, it's about the adventures and people and creatures and characters he meets along the way, and just about finding your inner grail as well, your inner goal. That's Amazing, good. but it's very funny as well, yeah? Oh yeah, well obviously it's, it's based on the movie, uh, the Monty Python movie, Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Um, um, and it's pretty much the same, isn't it, in, in, in those Yeah, it's the, it's the musical of the Monty Python's uh, a historic film, The Holy Grail. And if you don't know what The Holy Grail is, ask your mum and dad, they'll tell you all about it. But basically, I think it works out at about eight laughs per minute for the whole duration of the show. You don't get a chance to stop laughing. That's a good strike rate, I think. Eight yeah. laughs per minute, fantastic. Exactly. So, were you guys fans of Monty Python when you were growing up? And do you have a favourite sketch? Um, I was a big fan of The Life of Brian. I remember my mum and dad at the time um, putting on for me and me and my sister watching it in a home room. So I grew up with that and finding it hilarious. But almost as a kid, I don't know whether you felt the same, like finding it like, oh, it's adult humour, but I find it funny too. So it's like that kind of cheeky naughtiness about it. It did seem really naughty when you're young, but actually when you watch it back now, it's actually quite suitable. Yeah. Do you have a favourite sketch? It, I suppose it's just more very silly, really, isn't it? Uh, Dom and I were literally, our dads brought us up on it, you know, you'd stick a uh, VHS in the machine every Sunday afternoon and watch one of the VHS? Films. Sorry, what, what's <laughs> Sorry, this, this, this. <laughs> Think about your USB stick and enlarge it for about a hundred times bigger. <laughs> that, kids, is a VHS, VHS. <laughs> basically a big, big bit of video cassette tape, and, um, and it was the size of your exercise book at school, maybe. And uh, but uh, during the kids' holidays, like we had what well, fucking like five or six VHS videotapes, and that was your kids' holiday yeah. sort of thing. You know, you'd watch uh, Flying Circus, Life of Brian, Meaning of Life, uh, Holy Grail, uh, now something completely different. Basically, uh, everything that they did was our childhood for me and Rich. Yeah. Even though we grew up separately from each other, we had, we had the same thing. Our dads just brought us up on Python. But favourite sketches, uh, I always go for the obvious ones: Ministry of Silly Walks. Can't believe John Cleese doing a silly walk. Uh, parrot sketch, the dead parrot, always. <laughs> They're well worth looking on YouTube. Oh yes. Oh, okay. so, so did you guys um, manage to get tickets for the Monty Python show? Coming back after over 30 years, did you get tickets and how much would you sell them to people? Uh, <laughs> oh, no, I wouldn't sell them, but no, we they sold out like within what, 40 seconds. Sold that ridiculously, but we're, we're trying to get them to the theatre and just do a private show. I'm sure you could wind something. <laughs> just for us three. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, just yeah, for just us three. Us three. Yeah, yeah, they, they, I think they would go for that. <laughs> Of course they will, of course they will. Um, so Dick, you're playing King Arthur, mm. and Dom, you're playing Patsy. Yeah. Why have you been cast that way round, and was there ever a consideration of doing it the other way round? Oh yeah, there was a consideration of us both kind of swapping and changing throughout the run, but, but then we kind of both looked at each other and went, oh, I'm a bit taller than you, which kind of made sense that I was the king. But, and also we did a bit of a voice test, and my voice, we, I'm not saying either of us could sing, anymore, but uh, my voice may be slightly louder, He's a bit less stronger. worse than mine. Yeah, less worse than his. <laughs> <laughs> so so, so basically, the, the, way, the, the two roles are King Arthur, He's the lead role in the whole pop production, and he has he's on stage pretty much the whole show, has all the lines, he does all the songs, all the dance routines, uh, and so that's Richie's part. I clap coconuts together and don't say anything. <laughs> that sounds amazing. That sounds so perfect. A lot and, easier to learn. And we get paid the same. Is <laughs> that? So I'm so joyous of being in the double act. Are you regretting <laughs> this now, Dick? No, no, not at all, not at all. But I think mainly it was probably more the height thing than anything, to be honest, though, wasn't it? For some reason, in the show, King Arthur is, is supposed to be taller and grander and kind of more king-like, whereas Pat's is supposed to be a kind of smaller little uh, sidekick. Oh, weirdly, we did, we've done a three series of a, a medieval comedy, mm. which was narrated by one of the Pythons, right. called the, the legend of Dick and Dom, and in that our dynamics were the other way around. I was the one in charge, the hoity one, uh, you know, little grumpy hoity one, and, and you were the, the, the blithering twit behind me. Although <laughs> in the show I am King Arthur, but he is a little bit ditzy around the edges. He doesn't oh, quite know what's going on. And perhaps he actually keeps him in check, so Dom kind of is still in charge. Oh, so it's like the idiot that actually does know a little bit more than the king himself. Yes, exactly. Ah, fantastic. Now I hear there's a character called Sir Not Appearing in tonight's show or something yeah. like that. Now I've heard. Uh, Rumours that they're trying to find someone to actually play this part. What, what is this part and what does it involve? It's, um, oh, it's, it's Q and it's from basically there's an introduction at the beginning and he's, he's like, oh no, it's the narrator and he's mm. like, doing it because I'm not saying it at the point. And he introduces people that are going to be in the show, the knights, and gives them all the names, and then there's a random guy in a completely different costume overnight at the end. And, uh, 
I think it'd just be quite funny if it was someone that people did actually recognise in the audience. But that's the only thing you see of him. And he walks on and you go, you're not being in the show tonight. And he waves with a sorry and goes back up. Are you trying to get a part on the show? Yeah. <laughs> well, there's been discussions. We'll, 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 we'll find out maybe in a couple of weeks. Now, um, so that's... Western Wilma. Western Wilma came on who's a Twitter Oh, okay. interviewing people in the West End and doing sketches and stuff and she came over. Did she? Well, she played that part, right? Yes, yeah, she did. And that part's got nearly as many lines as Patsy. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. yeah. And now, I wanted to find out who would be the better Knight of the Round Table out of Dick or Dom. And I thought the only way we can sort of work this out is by going through the lyrics of Knights of the Round Table in the show to find out which one of you like the material. I think, I think Carly can uh, maybe help me um, judge it. So let's go through the lyrics here. Uh, we're Knights of the Round Table, we dance whenever we're able. So I want to know out of you two, who is more likely to dance at random moments, maybe dancing through Devlin's or Boogie and Round Boots the Chemist? Out of you two, which one would most Rick, likely that? Listen, when we go to weddings or parties or anything like that, I am so miserable. I sit down, my poor wife has to dance on her own. Rich gets up yeah. and dances. I'm famous for my backward dancing. Oh yeah, backward dancing. I don't dance in a circle. I don't dance standing still. I don't dance forward. I dance backwards. Hang on, we've got a camera on this. Can we see you dancing <laughs> backwards, please? Yeah. Dick. Oh, hates this. Oh, yeah. oh nice. nice. Everything's back, always back. He was, um, <laughs> wherever you go, the back. The last time I saw him do that. Always go back. Yeah. The, yeah. the last time I saw him doing his backward dancing was with uh, <laughs> Anne McPartland's wife at uh, our management's Christmas party. It was yeah. just awful. Oh, I was like, Rich, please, oh. please stop now. It's terrible. It's like you're trying to get off the dance floor without anyone being suspicious <laughs> about it. I'm going. I love the way you managed to dance over a glass of water. Yeah, yeah that's that skillful. That's another skill of it, actually. I never bump into anybody, I never knock anything over. It's many, many years of amazing. Right. Well, that's definitely a point uh, to Dick, so we'll carry on. Uh, we do routines and chorus scenes with footwork impeccable. Eat impeccable, it has yeah, to be yeah. for the run. We dine well here in Camelot, we eat ham and jam and spam a lot. Now, who out of you two is more likely to eat ham, jam, and spam? Ham, jam, spam. Oh. Ah, because Dom, you're vegetarian. Yes, correct. Oh. So this is this is two nil to Dick. Come on! Oh, he's got night night well, all over him, hasn't he? Well. Uh, we're nice at the round table. Our shows are formidable, but many times we're given rhymes that are quite unsingable. Now I want to find out who can say "wicked cricket critic" five times the cleanest. So wicked. Can I say it? I can't remember cricket, it. What? Wicked. Wicked. Yeah. Cricket. Yes. Critic. So someone who's a critic of cricket. And they're wicked. You want to say what? Five times? Five times. So and let's see who is cleanest out of those. So you let's can... start with Dick. Oh. Because <laughs> you're in the lead. Wicked cricket critic. Wicked cricket cricket critic. Wicked cricket critic. Wicked cricket cricket critic. Ah! That wasn't bad. That was quite good. Tom, here's your chance to oh, win. Uh, wicked cricket cricket. <laughs> <laughs> wicked. Wicked cricket. <laughs> you know, I can't really Carly, I mean, you have to give a point. Who gets a point for that? No, it's well, Dick. Okay. Can I hear Carly really? doing it? Because that sounds like yeah. one of the West End vocal warm up exercises. You know when you go, you not go kind of like Debbie Blackett, Debbie Blackett, Debbie Blackett, Pop a Catapult. Can, can you give it a go? What is it? Wicked, Wicked Cricket. No, I'm sorry, you've set me up now. Wicked Cricket Cricket. Hey, no, no, very I'm not even good. That was right, wasn't it? Wicked Cricket Critic. Oh, very good. Yeah, only one. See, that's uh, proper West Enders. That was good. Um, uh, we're opera mad in Camelot. We sing from the diaphragm a lot. Oh, God, I know and that's a long note. So I want you both at the same time to sing the word spam a lot and see if you can sing it for the longest. Mm -hmm. Hang okay. on a minute. We're just going to do our vibrato exercises. <laughs> okay. Right. Okay, ready? Oh, my goodness. I've been in the West End for one week. And right, we're going to do this. Right, okay. no. Three, two, one. Spam a lot. Spam a lot. <laughs> that was amazing. <laughs> That was awesome, that was Dick, that's another point. I mean, we might go for the clean sweep here. Um, in war we're tough and able, quite indefective Gable, whatever that means. Between our quests we, we sequin vests and impersonate Clark Gable. Now, no one knows what Clark Gable sounds like, but give your best Clark Gable impression. What? <laughs> <laughs> Hang on a minute. Who's the guy who's dead? He's dead, he's dead. Who's the guy who's the Franklin idea? I think that was him. I think it was, yeah, yeah. Was that on Facebook? Obviously, you'll probably put a, a sound. You'll put a, a sound piece of 
Clark Gable actually sounds like. No one knows like. what he sounds like. Oh, 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 right. I'm just going to have to Google, Google it. image him. <laughs> <laughs> let's, let's count that as, as nine. He's very beautiful though. Uh, Was he? Well, I mean, very, very you can happy. say that. Um, and then the last line is, it's a busy life in Camelot, I have to push the pram a lot. So out of you two, who is more likely to push a pram? Him. Me. Oh, so done a it, consolation done, done point. It, done it, done it twice now, I don't have to do it again. They've grown <laughs> out of them, so perfect. <laughs> So one point, so that's 4-1. Four one. Four so one. well done today, he's more likely to be a knight of the round table. Um, so thank you very much, just one final thing, what's happening next? Are you doing this all over Christmas? Mm -hmm. And then Carly, what are you doing in the new year? Anything lined up? Gosh, I don't know, well I'm here um, a little bit longer than these guys are sitting and going somewhere else, but I am here till like, on the 8th of February. Um, and then after that, I'm going to my family and see who will have me. Fantastic, <laughs> and Dick and Dom, um, I understand um, Absolute Genius Series 2 is coming back. Yes. And then what, is, what can we expect from that? Yeah, in the new year there's Absolute Genius Series 2, looking at uh, even more geniuses throughout the years. Uh, this year we look at uh, Alexander Fleming, who invented penicillin. Yeah, it's going to even more high -brow. What else did we do? We did Carl Benz, Carl Benz, the inventor of the motor car. Uh, we, we got to uh, go to Mercedes World and drive a uh, mm. Mercedes uh, around a racetrack uh, at about 130 miles an hour with a beautiful blonde girl. It was amazing. <laughs> she was a stunt driver and she was, she was, she was, she was, she was all your dreams come true. Yeah, we did the uh, Wright Brothers too. Don went in a stunt plane, did a loop the loop in the sky. That's mm. brilliant. Uh, also, Diddy Movies is coming back, which is... Uh, which we are Diddy absolutely Dick delighted. The best nominated Diddy Movies. Uh, and so, uh, yeah, so we're looking forward to that coming back. It's extra, extra stupid and we've worked out that Diddy Dick and Dom our alter egos have been on screen for about 10 11 years and uh, so that's we're looking forward to that coming back. Well, we're, we're also doing a bit of a live tour next year of a Dick and Dom show so. and don't forget the book coming out this year as well God, <laughs> so much stuff and, and, and we still complain to our agent that we're not busy <laughs> This morning at 9.30. Wow, we haven't got enough shows. Dick and Tom, Carly Stenson, enjoy Spanlock over Thank Christmas. You. And uh, all the best. Have a great Christmas. You Thank you. Too. Oh, can we just say as well, if uh, any families want to come along and see the show, because it is a family show, um, then on the 7th of December, the Saturday matinee will be for families, a big family gala. Great stuff. Thank you very much. Thank you.